Tonight will be Big Manage Night 2015. Um, just before we start the evening, uh, it's obviously free to attend tonight. Um, there's a boost for budget bucket here, so you can make a donation by the end. All the uh, money raised goes towards the living budget for the rest of the season. Um, to introduce everyone, we've got our physio, Callum Green, uh, head coaches, Matt McIntyre, Paul Barnes, and the manager, Louis Vazakli. Round of applause. Good morning. Good morning. Every time I do get the opportunity, um, I don't like being called the manager because we are a management team. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it without these two and, and like I say, um, I don't like the tag manager. I prefer um, us to be called a management team because all three of us um, play equal part in all the decisions we make and um, we're equal part manager. Okay. Okay. Who would like to uh, ask the first question for the management team? Louis, of the current squad that we have, could you give us an idea who's on contract, who's not on contract? Um, one of the main things that we decided to do this pre-season and when we were signing players is, is to get majority of the squad on contract so everybody knows where they stand um, everybody feels like this is their home um, because in the past when you have players on long contract and you get too many loan signings in you know they're, they're kind of their heart doesn't lie here um, and their, their intentions are uh, elsewhere as well so um, I would say the majority are and okay, no experience of being a manager either so how did you feel at the start of the next season, of this season basically how do you feel about coming with the manager's job and starting from scratch, really, uh, without having that experience and being at quite a high level of football? Have you learned much in those few weeks? Um, I'll, I'll begin the answer and I'll pass it on to Matt and Paul um, because, yeah, we're, we're new to management. We haven't managed previously and when the, the opportunity came up, I don't know if uh, many of you know, but we actually applied first time round and um, we were told we got to the final two and we didn't get the, uh, didn't get the nod. Obviously, Mr. Brown came in. Um, and uh, the rest, they say, is history. Um, but, yeah, like you say, the main thing for us was, was to get the team spirit back um, because that clearly wasn't there. The changing room wasn't an uh, enjoyable place to be. Um, I was injured at the time. And, and um, you know, I understand the importance of team spirit and, and how important it is, you know, throughout my whole time here, there's always been a great team spirit and especially when we, we won the league, you know, I've never been involved in a, in a better kind of changing room atmosphere um, and we knew that that was the, the le if that's the least that we did, it would have a positive impact um, and um, yeah, by bringing back, you know, like Jefford, Ben Jefford in on, uh, back from his loan spell, you know, that just gave the change room a boost and we made sure that the characters, we brought Roscoe back which was great as well as another boost. So we knew the importance of team spirit and that got us through um, and we managed to stay up by the skins of our teeth. Um, but yeah, starting the, uh, the pre-season, you know, as a, as a new management team with no experience, it literally, you, you're learning every single day. And um, we didn't have a summer, you know, <laughs> none of us. We, we were just every single day, it was just constantly just working towards pre-season and working towards this season and, and like I say every day you're just learning 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 and we're still learning now every single game you know when you're up against adversity how do you come back from it and we obviously had a, a tough spell of nine games without a win and you know a lot of people were doubting us which is to be expected I guess but we had 100% faith and confidence we could turn it around because we were playing well and, and we managed to turn it around so it's it's nice to know when you're faced against adversity that you can actually turn it around, you know, and prove to yourself and to, to each other that we can turn it around. So it's literally, we're learning every single day and, and um, that's the most important thing that, you know, from wins, from losses, that we, we take positives and we work on the negatives and yeah, we just keep to keep learning. That's it. Michael? I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in, Lou. Just obviously, if anybody <coughs> probably wouldn't have known Obviously, especially myself, I don't play for the club, but from a coaching background, obviously we've been friends outside of the club. But between myself and Matt, I think we've got over oh, nearly 30 years of coaching experience. So um, I know as, as a management team or a manager, um, there wasn't much experience, but I think we say all the time, coaching's coaching. 
Um, we, we worked at different levels of the game. Obviously, not in an environment like this before. But again, it's it's still coaching. It's working with players. And I think, as you can see from the work we've done so far, touch wood, it continues. Um, we're developing players. Um, and we're working as a group. Um, and at the end of the day, I think we're our own worst critics. You know, because we're always striving to be better. Um, we're always analysing ourselves. Like we say, we're learning. Um, but I think that's the main thing that we understand, that we're learning. Um, but we're progressing. And I think if, if anyone's seen results and performances, um, I would like to think we're making positive strides. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, and I think, you know, it's um, like Barnes, you said about the coaching side of things. It's, uh, I think, I, I obviously played for the club for a season. Um, and I've obviously been mates with Louis ever since then. Um, that's where we met. And um, so I've always kept a, a, a close eye on what's going on down here and, and the players that have been involved and come and gone. And, the situations that the club has been through off the field as well. I've, I've had a good idea of, of what's what's happened and in terms of the people that I believe are the best people to, to, to be in place of running the team, I think it needs to be a good coaching team first and foremost because you know it is what it is. We don't have the the uh, the capabilities of bringing in these name brand players and these big names that are knocking about in our league we have to go out and find lads that are maybe slightly under the radar boys that are maybe being placed on the scrap heap potentially because they've been labeled as bad eggs um, and we have to try and get them working as a, as a collective get them working as a team um, we have to try and improve the areas that they're not so good at um, to, to, to make them competitive, to make them, you know, a force at this level. So, um, yeah, you know, we, we're learning all the time. We've made mistakes. You know, we know what those mistakes are. The three of us have had disagreements. But one thing is for sure, we always get to the bottom of it. And we always present a united front in front of the boys. And we always agree with the final decision that we come to. It's a young, it's, I was going to say it's a young team, it's an incredibly young team. I mean, it must be the youngest team in professional football at the moment. I think we're average age of 21 the other week. Um, have you been tempted to sort of, you know, bring in a couple of older heads or, or do you think that might happen if they start struggling in the, in, in the winter months? I think the, um, the issue with older heads, um, you know, they do cost a lot more because you're paying for experience as well. and. And when we were looking at the recruitment uh, in the summer, we were looking at, you know, you do need a couple of experienced heads and, and um, I was meant to be one of them on the pitch. <laughs> I was meant to be one of them, but unfortunately, some people have said it's a sign, you know, that I, I was meant to be in the dugout and focus purely on preparing the team. But, you know, all I've, all I've known to do is be on the pitch and play and, and, and lead on the pitch and that's how I wanted to do it this year, this season. Um, I, I was more than happy with these guys, you know, taking care of everything on, on the side of the pitch and, and me leading on the pitch but um, obviously me, me getting injured uh, reduced our experienced heads uh, by one. Um, you've got Ricky Wellard in the team um, who's been in the league, you know, he's he's had a he's had a yeah, he's won this league. You know, he's got a good good lot of experience and and uh, I'm I'm sure he, he we've spoken about it. He, he didn't start as well as he could have, but I'm sure you'll all agree that he has definitely improved and he has been playing well in, in recent times and we've obviously given him the armband. Um, we see him as being an experienced head and and um, I'm going to say his name, he might get a few laughs, but old KSA, Kieran sent to me, he's a bit like Marmite, he's got a lot of people uh, that don't quite, you know, not on his side, but um, I think you will all agree that he had his part to play in keeping us up last year. He had some very effective performances when we came in, um, because he was maybe mismanaged in the past, um, and... Um, he is an interesting character, um, you know, and uh, you've got to know how to manage him and get the best out of him. And I see him as being an experienced head, and we've we've been without him, um, you know. So I think we've I think we've got enough in the team. Uh, we haven't had any uh, specific fitness tests, so I won't be able to tell you who the, the fittest player is. But I think you can all see um, that we don't lack fitness and. We play with a high energy and a high tempo, um, and that is a comment we do get a lot from opposition managers. After the games, they're like, yeah, 
you know you've got a very energetic you know fit team um, and that's our background you know um, I don't know if you know uh, me and Matt we have run a uh, football performance company for the last five years um, and that's what we specialize in um, so training is always of a high intensity style um, so the players are always working hard and, and pre-season was, was definitely good so I, I think the team is, is, is definitely uh, the fitness levels are definitely good in the team um, and, and that is the style we do like to play with all I want from that, the, um, we train three mornings a week, is that right? Yeah. Do all the players take part? That was very important for us this year and it's the main reason we did lose Joe Healy. Yeah. Um, because as, as most of you know, he was only able to train on Fridays only. And um, yeah, it was important for us um, that everybody we signed, it, it was part, part of our initial talk before they did sign that they were uh, able to take part in all three training sessions. Um, because you know we, we give the players different types of information on different days and it's important that everyone's on the same page everyone knows what systems we're going to go with what our tactics are what our style is and also from fitness levels as well you know it's it's, it's a full-time league you know it might not necessarily be classified as a professional league but it's uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, you know full professional uh, teams in the league and uh, it's uh, you definitely need to be fit to be able to survive in this league so yeah, it was important that everybody trains uh, every single day and, and everybody does train every single day. Yeah, I think more or as important as the fitness side of things is the organisation yeah. side of things. And, and like we spoke about before, you know, when you, when you are working with limited kind of resources, you have to make sure uh, that you are ultra organised. I was chatting to Matt at the bar a couple of weeks ago after Halifax and I think you could see from them a team that's... That's, that's having a bad time of it at the moment, albeit they won on Tuesday night. Um, the lack of organisation in the team, um, just to make an example of it, the lad that was playing left side, centre half for them, I think four balls of the same type went over his head, one after the other after the other, and just how quickly they got set up from different positions in the field. And you know, one thing for us that is so important is the organisation of the boys. They all must know their role within the team. Um, They've got to know what we're going to ask of them on a Saturday when we're playing against certain opposition and makes it really difficult when boys are missing sessions, whether it's due to being at work or maybe it might be a lone player and they're training with their clubs and not with us. So any loans that we take as well, the boys have got to train with us. What you're going to find this year is boys that teams don't often carve you open at this level. What they will do is they will play the percentages and they will generally play off a mistake from us. And they'll do it over and over and over again until somebody does switch off and there is a mistake. And it is from balls put into areas that cause problems and that cause indecision. Um, and then they do play again, I think it, it comes down to personnel as well. Because obviously like the end of last year, I thought we was quite successful with that 3-4-1-2 that we, we played with. Um, again, personnel-wise, this year at times, it's restricted us to play maybe a preferred system. Um, and again, I think, as you've seen in recent performances, the system that we're playing with at the moment has been pretty effective. And I think it's, it's found a good balance of where it's defending and in attack, allowing us again to keep the ball better at times, um, hit teams in maybe one way or another, um, different kind of attacking styles. Um, so at the moment, we've, we've kind of found a balance that we're pretty happy with. It's not to say that we can't play any other way, because like we said, you have many strings to your bow. Um, and whether you be it you're ch chasing a game, you might be trying to shut up shop for a game. Um, it might be against different opposition and personnel that you might be able to exploit. Because, like we said, we do look at teams that we play in quite quite a lot of detail. Um, so, if there are areas that we think we can exploit, we're more than happy <coughs> to go out and give it a go. We've got a uh, we've got a couple of guys that go out uh, and watch games for us, and and um, we did design a uh, scouting template that um, we give to them and, and they fill out, which gives us the information that we want to know about the opposition. Um, but we do a lot of it ourselves, um, which is watching games, video, foot video footage, doing research on the internet, looking at teams and lineups and systems. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, down to heights as well, and, and uh, he likes to play a little bit of a game. Um, you know, he, he likes to know every single player's squad number, their position, their height. 
and um, I quiz him at random and uh, whether they attach their pieces or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, he's pretty good. I'd probably say he's got. Uh, yeah, I'd probably say he's 100% at the moment. I'm yet to catch him out. It, it did make me laugh. Me laugh um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know, one thing that happens kind of on the management circuit is that managers do you know help each other out occasionally. They 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 ring each other and ask for information and. You know, when you give them a bit of information against teams that we've played against, they, they're more than happy to give you information in return about teams they've played. And I had a manager ring me the other week, I won't say uh, who it was, um, from a conference team, and he was playing against a team uh, that we had recently played. And um, the details he was asking were very vague details. And uh, I said to these guys the next day, I had such and such ring me, and, and he wanted to know this and this. And I was like, he didn't want to know about... Um, you know, any of the pick boys on the bench, he didn't want to know about this, he didn't want to know about that, because the amount of detail we go into, and as soon as a lad, as soon as I see the sub board coming up on the side, I always snap my neck around, Barnsley, is he attacking set pieces, this lad? Come on, <laughs> Barnsley will be able to give me the answer straight away. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for someone who's not here tonight, who uh, we were joking about earlier when we were having some dinner, um, Robbie, the goalkeeping coach, who is um, our secret spy as well, <laughs> he, uh, he is... Literally, I've never met somebody who is addicted to football more than uh, Roberto, the Italian. Um, and uh, it's probably scouting Borenwood right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's not here. We were joking that you know the reason why he's not here today is because, uh, like me, he's got he's got a newborn baby at home, and um, so he had to babysit. And uh, we were joking that he was sat with the baby in one hand, with his laptop out on the other hand, scouting Borenwood. And we use a um, a project management tool. Um, to, to log all of our information in, um, you know, and it has different subjects, uh, and then there is a section for scouting and talent identification and opposition it, within that project management tool. And I can guarantee if I look at my phone now, <laughs> opposition will be flashing up. Because Robbie, Robbie, the Italian, will be uh, uploading information into it, and it's great these days. You know, you got you got the internet which you can get so much information from about teams not only on YouTube um, there's tools like uh, uh, there's one called Y Scout uh, which we use a lot as well um, where you can get full 90 minutes from most teams in our league um, when you go on there and watch it and it's even as in depth as when you, you can type in individual players and it will upload all of their clips from games so it's a pretty good service so we use things like that and then, on top of that, we've got contacts up and down the country as well, which we can always ring and, and get some, some more kind of detailed information on teams. So, yeah, a lot of work goes into it um, to give the boys all the information, whether they listen to it or not, is another thing, but <laughs> you can only give it to them, you know, you can only give them all of the tools and, and all of the information, and then it's down to them on a Saturday to go out and carry it out. So, so we're never under the then? Wow, never, never. Yeah. Yeah, that's, never. that's one thing you can guarantee. You feel that we've always been the, the small boys of this league. Do you think we get a bad press and harshly treated at times as well? It must, it, you know, it frustrates us sometimes seeing some decisions against us. And it must frustrate you guys. You can't be against it. If we can. Um, but how do you deal with that? You must get into the players' minds to get rid of that as well. Yeah, that was probably one of our number one briefs from uh, Barry and Barry <laughs> beginning of the season. <laughs> sort of a disciplinary record out. And um, yeah, discipline starts from the top. Um, starts from the top down. And, and um, I, I, I would say um, in the past, on the, uh, the old training field, you know, the environment was very fun and, and uh, maybe a little bit slack. And, and that's where I think the lack of discipline uh, starts on the training field. Uh, and, and it got out of hand last year, that's for sure. A um, couple of individuals, I guess, uh, didn't help. Um, but yeah, like I say, it starts from the top, and, and, and we, we said it from the beginning. We had a meeting upstairs uh, before the season started with all the players, signed players, and, and, and we told them it had to improve because you know the league's going to be tough enough as it is. But if you go down to ten men, you're just making things a lot harder for yourselves. And um, <coughs> talking about small club, big club, um, I guess I won't get find or anything like that, get disciplined by talking about officials, but I definitely think they do um, tend to edge towards the bigger teams. They feel a bit more of a um, pressure in giving decisions, uh, especially when we're playing at their grounds, you know, and they've got a lot of fans there. And I do feel that the, uh, the referees and the officials at this level do feel a little bit of a pressure. 
So they, they probably think, you know, these, these small teams are going to go down anyway. They're going to be down there anyway. So there's no harm in giving a decision against them because they're not expected to win this game anyway. So I do think there's a little bit of that. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I, I say, I, I know, obviously, uh, most of us know that feeling of being the underdog. Um, going back to obviously that meeting at the beginning of the season, I think that, that, that was something in our presentation that we said to the players. You know, and it's us, you know, you guys included. It's kind of us against them. Yeah. Um, and I tell you what, it's it's kind of it's worked well for us so far. It's that siege mentality of you know no one's going to give us anything. Whatever we get, we've got to work for. We've got to earn it. Um, and at the minute, you know that that's going to be the message when we keep moving forward. Um, we, we don't want anyone to give us anything. You know, we're willing to work for it. Um, and at the moment, you know, we'll keep we'll keep going with that. I think it sets a good example. And I think going back to that said about being professional, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what we are. We're professional coaches. Um, granted, we might not be a professional football club, but we treat it as if it is. Um, so training field, you know, everything, schedule, timetable, everything's done because if they were to be fortunate enough to progress into league football, if that's not the standard that they get, they should be asking the question why. Because we feel at this level, that should be the minimum. Oh, sorry, young lady had a hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, just as, as Matt suggested, um, you know, just make yourselves heard. Make yourselves heard, and uh, I tell you what, you can do. You can think of some chants for these two. Uh, I've, got, <laughs> I've got a chant that I think I heard at the end of the game the other day, and um, you know, it's unfair that you're singing my name when these two uh, uh, deserve some credit as well. So I guess you can go away and think of some chants for these two. I think if we can keep hold of them, I think in the summer there's going to be a lot of attention around that core of players, and um, you guys will all know who they are yourselves, you know, you see, you see them play every Saturday. Um, but if we can keep that core, I think we could have a very, very um, special team next season with, with 50 games <coughs> under a lot of their belts. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to add to that, um, those young players, we've spoken to them, um, and, and we've told them the importance of getting a good, solid season behind them. Because there are whispers, and, and quite a few of them do have agents. I don't know why they have agents uh, <laughs> at their ages and at this level, but um, they do. Um, so yeah, there's always going to be whispers and stuff, but it's important that we, we keep their, their uh, feet on the ground and keep their heads focused on, on getting a good solid season behind them, because they'll get better moves um, with more foundation uh, behind them. You know? It's important they wait, you know, and that they understand and their families understand the importance of them waiting for the right move. And sometimes the agent, it's, it's in the agent's best best interests for them to go at like, the first available opportunity and move them on. Um, luckily enough for us, some of the agents that we work with, and we only work with a handful of them, um, and they provided with us with quite a few good players this season, um, they do have their players' interests at heart and they know that we are a better option for them over maybe someone in League 2 because they might get swallowed up in League 2 and they probably won't cut the mustard at that level and, um, and they're better off playing a season here, maybe two seasons here and then they're going to be ready to go to somewhere in the Championship which happens a lot from this level of football these days. You see it, you see it happen quite a lot and um, I honestly do believe that we do have a a good solid core of players that are capable of making those sorts of moves probably in two seasons time so the rest of this season and next season which is why I think if we can keep hold of them and they don't get swayed by those league two clubs and maybe your, your, your bigger payers in our league in the summer I think we could have a real kind of uh, kind of good team next year good special team next year although we've got a young squad um, as uh, Lewis mentioned earlier, guys are a little bit older, such as Ricky uh, and Saint Cabo's towards in that category. Um, and he's kind of forty-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's spent a lot of times within, in and around these leagues and the Conference South, um, and maybe hasn't had the correct treatment throughout his time. And as you guys know, how how quick he is, um, biomechanically and physiologically, you are going to get a couple little niggles, little bits and pieces. And it's something that we've worked on. Um, so, for example, at the beginning of the season, each player come in and had a full medical screen uh, to try and identify injuries before it happened. And he was one of them. And uh, one of his things is a strengthening his hamstrings because he is so quick. And so it's something that we've progressed on. 
and as the season's come on, he has gone on to play more and more minutes. If you look from the start of the season to now, um, yeah, his minutes and stuff has gone up, so it's, it's good to see. We spoke about between the three of us, and we spoke about to, to Barry and Barry. You know, when we when we took it on, was that we have to, you know, um, accept that with you know breeding good young players, they are going to go one day. You know, but if they're going to go, we want to benefit from them having them in our first team for two to three seasons, so that they've made the team and the club successful. And then when they go, their stock is at a level where they're going to make the, the, the club some good money, some serious money. Um, so it's not about players coming in for, for one season or for six months and then off they go. Um, you know, it's, it's our job to convince the players and we honestly do believe that, you know, those boys that we have there at the moment, this is the best place for them to really learn their trade. Um, and, you know, like with anything, Teams at a higher level, they always want to be, be associated with successful players. They'll be looking at those boys thinking, are they winners? We want to know if they're winners. They're obviously good football players, but are they winners? And so next season, if they go and show that they're successful and they, they push the team, which is always at the start of every season expected to be in the relegation zone, if they push that team on to maybe searching towards that, that playoff zone, then that is going to write, make their stock rise even further and we've sold that to them and we believe that, we honestly do believe that this is the best place for them we believe that we're the best three people for their development uh, we're going to be very honest with them at all times it's the only way they're going to get better so. First, just a quickie about players clauses and contracts like you said, last year we, we lost Harry very cheaply is there anything we can do with players and agents demanding low fees as get out clauses or do we have to sometimes accept that just to get that kind of player into the club? Yeah, you, you, you've said it just then. Um, sometimes it does come down to it's either that clause is in there or you don't get the player. So it's it's one of those where you've just got to weigh up the situation and, and sometimes you do have to accept the clauses in there um, if you do want to sign that player. Um, and, you know, if, if you're trying to put a, a big old clause in, 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 in the young lad's contract then sometimes the agents will come back and be like you know haven't you got the best interest of my player at, at heart you know so it's it's one of those where you're constantly butting heads with with agents um and just trying to find uh the right kind of medium you know um, i think it's looking at each individual situation with the players as well because you know like we've just speaking about we've got the that core of players that we see you know maybe being a two-year project for maybe sometimes a three-year project but then you've got other players that you have the opportunity to sign that have got the quality to add to the team right now but the only way like they're going to they're going to come is if there's a, a release clause of some sort and you think to yourself well maybe you know we'll get a year out of them and then you know the release clause is x amount and we've got a year out of a good player if he does go in the summer, then the club's making money and we haven't really developed him too much because he's only been here for a season, so we've not spent too much time on him. So it's kind of a win-win situation. You have to look at each situation on, on face value. They're all different. But, we have yeah. ambitions to definitely go higher, that's for sure. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's important that we, we do focus on um, what's happening now. And, and uh, personally, um, that's how I, I like to, uh, to approach things. I think as well, you know, we talked about the, the core group of players getting people to sign to your contract. I think part of our agreement was, again, committing for a longer period more than just a year. So it was two years that we wanted to commit for because we believe that in two years we can show what we're capable of as coaches and a management team and we can get the best out of the group. Um, and, and I think just touching on it because it's the old cliche, cliche in football, it's, it's such a... A weird and wacky world. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. I remember when I got a phone call from the guys saying about we've been asked to go and take over because Mr. Brown has been relieved of his duties. I was just recovering after Chelsea played Tottenham in the cup final, <laughs> struggling to go work. And I, and I was actually thinking, I remember we had a conversation, obviously, myself and Matt, and I was thinking, football coaches, I don't know if I want to carry on doing this. Think about maybe changing my career. Just got a bit stale. Obviously, my coaching role worked at other clubs. 
thought, can't really see a future in it for myself. And funny enough, I got a phone call saying that we've been offered it. We've got to take training tomorrow morning. <laughs> so I better start planning, planning a session. And we're here now. So uh, that's football over, I think. Yeah, I, th- I think it's like when Louis says, you don't, you don't look that far in the future. It's, it's, it's so difficult to, it's not just us saying it to, to kind of um, try and cover anything over. But you, you almost don't get any time to, to, um, to think about your losses too much because the next thing is coming so quickly and you don't get any time to enjoy your wins either. You know, um, you're always, take, take Saturday for instance, you know, you enjoy it on the coach trip home, um, but then Sunday comes and you're thinking to yourself, 48 hours away from another game, wow, what have we got to prepare? We've got to get, we've got to get all, all of our information together because we're not going to see the players. between. We don't see them on Monday mornings. Um, the next time we see them is when they turn up for that match on a Tuesday. So we've got to get everything prepared. Um, make sure that we know everything that we do know to go and play the opposition team. And so straight away, you've just forgotten that you've just won a game. You don't get any time to enjoy it. And so you don't, also don't get any time to really look too far into the future. All I, I know is, is that the three of us are... You know we're ambitious about about pushing on and, and just doing as well as we can do. And at the moment, that just means winning tomorrow, because that's what we've planned for all week. And uh, in terms of the club, because you asked about the club as well, yeah, you know when we came in, we we kind of we outlined you know h- how we saw potentially things running for for the next three years and um, or two and a half years especially. And that started from when we took over in March, and that was the immediate future. And we just survival was the immediate future because of the position we, we took over and we managed to accomplish that you know by the skin of our teeth as Lou said before um, this year was about stability um, we started the season as, uh, as relegation favourites again and as, as always and no surprise there yeah and, um, and this year was about st- stability we, we've given the, the players a target to hit um, we've given them individual targets we've given them a targets as a team um, the target is mid-table. You know, we, we, we've wanted to finish 12th place or above. Um, some people might say that that is aiming a little low, but we see it as big progression. You know, and um, and then next season, like we've just said, you know, if we can manage to make it to, to retain the players we want to retain, um, we don't see why we wouldn't be pushing up towards that top top five. Um, and like Barnsley said, things change so quickly. This time next year we could be sitting here and for some weird reason there could have been a huge overhaul in the way the club's run and we might not know where we are. We could be, you know, anywhere. Don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Let's take from there. Can we go back to the Gateshead game? This is specifically for you, Louis. I don't know if you read it on the paper, but the, the match report said Welling made no friends with their uh, time oh, boys. Thing that was so but yes. the bloke who interviewed you was a bloke who wrote it. He didn't say anything. Do you think, why couldn't he have said that to you directly to your face? Uh, I've got no control over that, mate. I've got no control over that. He, he was scared. He was scared of me. That's why. <laughs> First of all, I, I, I won't call it time wasting. We'll refer to it as game, game management. management. <laughs> That's what we call it to the boys. Game management. Yeah. Everyone, can we just have a, a round of applause to the yeah. dogs?